Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season two premiere of Tulsa King. Great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So we're picking up in the aftermath of the season one finale, and... Uh, we have uh, Dwight being locked up. And I love that he's got all this stuff. It's like, well, this chain and this amount of money and this silver clip. And he looks to the guard behind him and like, oh, it's a long night, ain't it? And the guy was like, turn back around. And Dwight's almost like, Jesus, all right, you know, no need to be rude. But I love that he gets in, in the jail cell and he talks to this guy, Harlan, who is in there for white collar crimes. He basically uh, stole 12, $12.5 million in subsidies for some like wind turbine stuff uh, from the government. Government and you're like, the moment he starts talking to Dwight, I'm like, wait, Dwight, did you just land in jail and just found yourself another scheme to use to make money? And I was like, are you about to walk out of here with that? And it's like, yeah. Turns out, uh, he, uh, poor Harlan ended up gambling that away, which I'm like, yeah, no matter how rich you are, if you're a gambling person, that was like, damn, dude. I mean, but you know, gambling addiction or what? Like, he must have been a gambler before he made that money, because I'm like, yo. 12 and a half mil you gambled away and it's like yeah he's gonna be sitting up for eight years but Dwight's like nah you'll handle that I even love when Harlan was like oh have you been to prison he's like yeah briefly it's like yeah you're like two decades uh stint yeah like, yeah let's let's call that brief um but nevertheless I love that he gave Harlan some advice it was like yo when someone tells you to pass the salt you're like no I'm gonna take yeah I'm gonna pass the salt and I'm gonna smash it in your face until it like bashes to the back of your skull because if you don't you're gonna be having like you know uh we wearing red nail polish you're gonna be wearing a dress and you're you're gonna be answering to the name bitch so it's like Harlan Harlan got the best advice he could I even love him telling uh Dwight later on it's like oh if you you know look me up and Dwight's like Oh, trust me, I'll know where you'll be at for the next eight years. But I, I was almost hoping, like, oh, is Harlan going to get involved? But I'm like, no, I think he just sparks the idea for Dwight. I'd love it if something could happen where somehow Dwight and Harlan do work together. But it's like, that's probably not it. That's probably the only time we're seeing Harlan. But I, I did feel bad for the guy. I mean, especially because he got roughed up by the guy who's in there talking tough. And as Dwight puts it, it's like, yeah, the people you got to be most concerned about are the quiet ones. So he laid home dude out who was running his mouth. So it's like, and gave Harlan some good advice. Time for court. Obviously, Tina's kind of upset behind all this because it's like she slowly but surely kind of like started opening up again and feeling like, okay, I've got my dad back despite our tumultuous, complicated relationship. And now it's like, okay, history's repeating itself. Like, I don't, I got my hopes up for nothing, but it's like, yeah, it's, you know, because the crew's trying to figure out what are we going to do, which, you know, Goody's like, nah, I'm going to be second in command, which Tyson's like, Yo, I'm the driver. It's like, shut up. You and Armand don't even say anything. He's like, I'm going to be kind of the, the, the current like fill-in boss. Uh, and then you'll have um, Mitch be the underboss. You know, so. But when it's all said and done in the courtroom, uh, of course, he got like a court-appointed lawyer. Um, and, but, man, uh, you know, he's like... Uh, Dwight's like, I, I, I got this. Don't worry about it. So he's like, I'm a business owner. I got family here. I don't even have a passport. I'm not a flight risk. So bail turns out to be like three mil, which Tina puts up part of it. Like she's like putting up like her home or something like that. I forgot what it was. She put something up and because she's going to have to cover like that 10%, you know. So I was like, okay, so which Dwight wanted to talk about that more after the fact. But it's like, nah, that's kind of a moot point. So. Stacy's not too keen on finding out that Dwight's okay because immediately she's like, yo, we had our relationship what it was and I stabbed him in the back. He's going to be extra. It'd be bad enough I was just some cop who locked him up. We had a very specific and special relationship and I locked him up. So like I need to I, transfer me to a different place. But it's like, yeah, you're not really welcomed anywhere right now. So you're kind of stuck here. You know, her boss can't really do anything for her. So that puts her in a very awkward situation. But Dwight doesn't immediately jump on that. He's dealing with everything else, kind of enjoying life. I mean, what really only sparked him... Because he didn't, he 
didn't was wasn't even thinking about going towards Stacy or paying her any attention until those cops came to him being like, "Yo, uh, you you know, it, oh, you're trying to head towards the building." He's like, "Whoa, you think I'm gonna threaten her?" So that's what made him decide to see her. And he's like, "Yeah, honestly, after you know, when I was locked up, I put up a brave face and." I try to pretend like everything was good, but it was lonely. And he's like, it, he, it, it stripped him of something. He lost something. And he felt like he got a little bit of that shimmer back the moment he met Stacy. You know, and that's kind of sad. Because, like, the thing is, the, the complicated circumstances aside, obviously Dwight really likes her. She really likes him, too. Like, gangster, even upon finding out him being a gangster that he is, because he does have his own code, and he's got a swagger about him. Once again, it's Sly. Sly's just naturally got that swagger about him, and he just, like, it oozes through the character. But the fact of the matter is, like, she just legitimately likes him, too. But that's why he puts it. It was like, it was never going to work out. Like, both uh, our, co like, our situations could never coexist in this circumstance, but... For him, it's like that's what really sucks. Is like because like she was that like spark back into his life, and he felt something good, and now it's kind of been tarnished. Cause like she's initially the moment she got home and she saw him waiting, it's like you're here to kill me. He's like, why? I'm not gonna kill you, Stacy. So she's like, why are you here? He's like, I want you to look you in the eyes and kind of say this. And he's like, I don't blame you because you were just being used. So he's like, it's, see you, Stacy. It was good while it lasted. Because for him, it's like, you are, the, you are the person I respect more than anyone else. I have, like, nothing but respect for you. And she's like, I have no idea how to, like, respond to that. And just kind of bounces. And you, like I said, you see the look on her face where she feels bad about betraying him. Because, once again, she really, really likes him. And so it's like, whatever that was, what could have been. I mean, once again, it, w it was always going to have an expiration date. You're on two, you're two different sides of the law. It was never going to work. But when it's all said and done, you know, Dwight came back out and put a gun in the um, glove box. And you're like, oh, shit. So I guess when Dwight initially went there, he had it in his head to kill her. But maybe the moment she walked through the door, he changed his mind. Or maybe he had the gun on him because... Maybe from the beginning, he had no idea what he was going to do. Maybe I'll kill her. Maybe I won't. Maybe it all comes down to her response. But I think when he was telling her to look him in the eyes, I think in that moment, he was trying to decide too. Because why, why even have the gun with you in there if you that wasn't even crossing your mind at all that you might potentially kill her? So the fact is, so that wasn't completely true. Like there's a part of him that was considering, but I guess once again, maybe he'll, you know, justify it by being like, well, no, I didn't come in here with the sole intention of killing you. I was going to determine how you, how when I looked you in the eyes and you looked me in the eyes, how I felt about that and would decide, you know? Because even Stacy's like, yeah, I'm the, like, officer and everything. Like, I'm the one. Like, you make me disappear, the rest of uh, all this kind of goes away. But it's like, despite that, Dwight's like, no, I'm not going to do that because he cares too much for her. But, so... Just the way things were going last season, I already kind of felt like it wasn't going to be a him and Stacy situation. That would be a him and Margaret because Margaret definitely has a like thing for him as well. So, I mean, she even told him when he went to come see Pilot that it's like, yo, like I, you know, see you all throughout the news and everything. He's like, well, you can't really, you know take everything they saying about me but I she finds you interesting and I think she, you know unlike, unlike Stacy who has a you know it's kind of a big no-no considering her career Margaret I don't know I think she sees more than the gangster when it comes to Dwight I, I, I don't know it's hard it's hard. I'm curious what she does see when she sees Dwight when she just just sees Dwight as Dwight and everything else is just toppings essentially like you know they're just extra bits or does she see Dwight as in, in his entirety and kind of accept it and which you know which you know any human being just wants to be accepted you know and Dwight's like my my complications and stuff aside my my career my time in jail I mean being you know the wise guy that I am like you know can anyone accept me for that and it seems like Margaret could but we'll, we'll see where things kind of go on that front but I mean, because uh, Dwight is out and about, uh, the they are still trying to find different avenues on how to make money, which where uh, Dwight brought up the uh, Harlan scheme. And he ended up talking to Bodie about it, which Bodie's got the new weed shop. It looks great. Um... Uh,
And then they had that interesting conversation about like, well, like the insurance policy they have to take out on a place because, well, if if our customer comes here, gets high from our supply, and then goes home and does something stupid, we're liable for it. Which I'm like, I, uh, I don't know, man. That seems that does seem unfair. It's like if you did it in our property, sure you're held liable. That makes sense. Sadly, I don't know if that's a good thing, bad thing. It is what it is. Something happens to you on a certain property, you're held. That property's held liable. But you're in the comfort on your own home, or you left the vicinity, but you orchestrated. And I guess in the eyes of the law, it's like you facilitated and orchestrated the circumstances said person was in before they did something stupid. It's like your side of the business, your side of things. This person would have never, might not have done said reckless or terrible thing if not <laughs> augmented by your products, essentially. So, which I, I understand where Bodie and um, Dwight are coming from. It's like, that's unfair. I'm sure there are instances where that type of role, you're like, oh, it's a good thing it exists. But because we like Dwight and Bodie and this weird chat, you're kind of like, oh, that's kind of unfair. But once again, I'm sure there are larger implications of what that is in place for, like why there is that type of liability exists in that capacity. I'm sure there are larger reasons beyond just this for that, but still. I also love our little montage where, uh, was it? It's Fred, Mitch, Tyson, and Bodie all getting suits and uh, all looking spiffy and awesome as they're going to that charity event that Margaret invited uh, Dwight to. Which, you know, they're outside like getting high and Fred's like, yo, do you smell? And they're like, yeah, I want to go in there before they run out of prime ribs. Like, how you know they have prime ribs? Like, yo, bro, I can smell it. Tyson's like, dude, your ass always want to eat something. Um, I also love that Armand show up and he like banged into someone else's car. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And it's like, yeah, he kind of came a few sheets to the wind because you're like, damn. And he's kind of starting up a little bit with um, Dwight, but he's like, yo. I'm sorry, my wife, she took the kids, and now I'm trying to sell the house, you know, so I've got to deal with all that. Plus, on top of that, I'm stuck with the damn debt I owe you. It's like, it's all killing me, so he gets sent home. But you're like, you actually do feel bad for um, Armand. So I'm curious to see where that storyline ends up going. If Armand feels like he might be that weaselly character that might ultimately end up betraying Dwight. I don't think so. He's been loyal up until this point. So, I mean, well, aside from the whole, you know, trying to kill Dwight thing. But, you know, after that, they've been good, you know. So, I don't know. I don't, guy's going through it. He's having going through a rough patch right now. So, I'm, I'm going to give him some leeway. But I'm sure he's... I'm just worried that he's going to use that leeway to call some problems later on. We'll see. Maybe it's all kind of, but it just feels like that's a beginning season setup for like that stuff to like ripple out and play out throughout the season of him just like becoming more and more frustrated with the circumstances and wanting to try to get from underneath Dwight. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, Dwight at the party ended up running into uh, Cal who is like a big, well, he's a big oil dude who ended up kind of owning like one of the biggest like distributors of weed or something like that. Played by Neil McDonough. I knew he was in the season because I, I think I saw a commercial with him in it uh, for the show. And, but I, I think I forgot about that until I saw his name in the credits. I was like, ah, I get so excited. I always love seeing Neil McDonough pop up and stuff. So I'm like, hell yeah, dude. And he plays, oh, he's playing a, his character's such a prick. Like, that's the thing. Neil McDonough can play swarm, smarmy. I don't know how to play. Like, you're just like, ooh. He, he's, he plays characters that you're just like, who seem so slimy. And just they're, like, the way he portray, he can portray a slimy character. Just, like, so swarmy with their, like, smile. And just kind of like, yeah, he's just like, he plays a character, like, very punchable characters really well. I don't know if that, did, I don't know if, I don't know how, if I'm properly describing it, but just, there's something about this character, Cal, that you're just like, mm, you swarmy bastard, thinking you're better than me. Like, Dwight kind of got that energy from him. And it's basically like, yo, stay in your lane. You just got here. I know who you are, Mr. Man Freddy. Basically, it's like, yeah, I've got my lane of business. I know what business you're in, both the criminal side of things and the weed business. Don't step in my territory. We're going to have a problem. And he's like, ooh, what, am I supposed to be, feel threatened? And Dwight's like, yeah, you should be. 
So, and he just kind of lost all flair for being there. Because he wanted to get cozy up to Cal just because it's like, right, guy's main competition. So, I don't know if they, he was hoping for a more collaborative venture together i figured that might have been what dwight was aiming for but now it's like no no you disrespected me and looked down upon me because he's like oh you people i know where you come from looking at him it's like oh you're just some thug you're nothing more and whereas i i'm someone with real power with real push and when those with real power meet those who play tough who act like tough shit that's when reality smacks you in the face and recognize the difference between make-believe power and real power type of conversation. So, Then on top of all of this, you also have to add in the situation that's happening back in, was it New York, with Cheeky, um, with Cheeky who is trying to rein things in as word is getting out about about like well about Dwight about Goody and now it's making uh, Cheeky look weak by comparison as a dude Jerry's like yo like this is what's kind of running around like there's so many damn rumors I expected him like him popping Jerry at the end was kind of surprising because I actually expected him to do that because as we've seen uh, Cheeky can be very light like he's got a short fuse and he will fly off that handle as any form of disrespect and uh, feeling like he's owed something. Uh, but the fact is the moment Jerry was saying that, even though Jerry's not saying he believes that these are just rummaging he's hearing and stuff like that, he's still loyal to you and stuff. But just to kind of make a point to signa send a message to everyone and especially Goody at the end of the episode, he popped, uh, popped Jerry just because it's like, oh, this is for your disloyalty and this is what happens to disloyal people. And it's just like Jerry didn't say anything. All Jerry did was like talk about I mean, maybe in his some way he was, but maybe they knew by taking out Jerry it was a message to Goody. Um, I'm curious how... Uh, I don't know if Dwight heard about that at the end of the episode. Um, because, I mean, this was this is not Chickies. Like, he, he took this by force. Um, he was not ready for it. He's not the person for this. He he has too much pride and wants to show people. He feels he has too much to prove to other people. And that's where his weakness is. Like, he's making very... I mean, I'm sure Vince is okay with it because Vince was telling him, like, yo, we got to make moves. We got to show a show of force. We can't just chillax and wait. Which, Chicky, I think, like, those two are very hot-headed in their approach. And no one else is going to stand up to be like, hey, boss, whatever you want. And especially now that he made such an example out of Jerry, it's like, okay, anyone else, any rumor rummaging and stuff like that, that's going to be, they're going to, they put the kibosh on that immediately. So we'll see where things kind of go from there, um, especially when you've got that. Going back to the cowl of it all, he calls up uh, Frank Grillo's character. Uh, I was wondering, I was like, oh yeah, because I saw his name in the opening. Like, where is he going? Oh, there he is at the tail end. Someone who uh, seems to have history with Dwight. And it's like, yeah, he's here. Isn't this supposed to be your territory? So it's Cal working. Well, it's probably not a thing of Cal is working for him. It's most likely like, oh, we work together. It's kind of a collaborative effort. But Cal probably thinks himself better and that, oh, I'm the one that's really in control. I let him pretend and think he's in control. So the fact is, I think it's interesting that you went and just kind of went. It felt kind of like a, oh, you went crying to daddy type of situation at the end there. But, you know, maybe I'm reading too much into it. We don't really know their dynamic, but it felt like that to me. The fact that you immediately ended up calling up him. But it's like, well, mainly it's because, like, well, you're in business with him. And m Dwight could be an issue because maybe what he did say, maybe his threats did kind of shake you. and Because you did forget for a second who the fuck you were dealing with. So I don't know. Maybe Frank Grillo's character seems like he's a gangster himself considering it seems like he knows Dwight. But I mean, maybe it's just a reputation thing. He knows Dwight. Maybe he doesn't personally know Dwight. Um, see, I'm, I'm interested to see where um that takes us oh yeah forgot about our, our new introduction to the crew too I, I was thinking about that earlier we got uh what was it bigfoot his name's michael interesting enough um but he's like no I prefer to name bigfoot it's like yeah he's actually kind of a sweet guy and it's like oh like what he was like what's your thing and it's like oh psychology and it's like how's that work it's like well i try to understand that people are rude before i smash their faces in and Dwight's like I like that. All right, man. Like, you know, this job can get pretty dark. He's like, yeah, I'm all about it, sir. And he's like, okay. 
job's yours. And also told Mitch, you know, make sure your cousin starts wearing, like, some sleeves now and it's like, and we see him at the party, kind of, like, hair in the bun, like, yo. I almost didn't recognize him, because, you know, wearing the suit and having his hair in a bun, I almost didn't recognize him at the party, so... I do love this, like, very haphazard makeshift family and just, like, these random, like, uh, characters we get associated with. So, yeah. I I'm, I'm excited to see where the season goes. I've tried to avoid as much as possible, so I don't really know what to expect story beat-wise. I've avoided a lot of trailers, so I'm excited to kind of see where this season ends up taking us. So excited to have Tulsa King back. This show is just, it's so good and just so much, like, like I brought it up last season, it's like it's like a fun crime drama. Not in the sense that it's meant to be comedic, but there's just so much like a fun energy to it that I love the show a lot. So I'm so excited to have more of it. And I'm excited to see where the next episode takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To so the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.